Hi, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, this is Talib Zeus and the topic for today is Astro Theology. Astro relating to the stars of celestial objects, theology, the study of the nature of God and religious beliefs. Now when we look at Astro Theology, there's many things to there's many things to really look at. So it's not just what we're going to look at here. We're going to look at the seven major planets here, but there's also things, other things to consider. So there's also the planets, uh, the the actual star signs, for example, star signs of the zodiac, which represent the twelve disciples of Jesus and so forth. But that's for another video. So for this one, it's just to keep it nice and simple and introduce people to haven't to those who haven't looked at this beforehand. To give you introductions. First of all, we'll start with the sun. The sun is the savior, the light of the world, also known as the day star. The sun, his day of worship is Sunday. Hence, we get the word Sunday from, or the day Sunday from that day. And many religions will have the Sunday as the holy day. Its colors gold and yellow, rules Leo. And we look to the east when we pray because the sun rises in the east. So, all major religions will look to the east when they pray because that's where the sun rises. The sun is actually the first, the first deity that was worshipped by man because the sun would come out and would... In other words, when man was scared of the dark, the sun would come out and save them. And then the sun also gives energy and it gives food to the crops and food to us and so forth. If you don't get enough sun, you're going to lack vitamin D. So you can see the sun is very important to, to the life of our planet. And there's many verses in the Bible that you can relate to the sun as well. The sun is also the sun, as in the S-O-N sun, the son of God. In different incarnations, different religions, is known as Jesus, Horus, Mithra, Superman, Krishna, Attis, etc. I know with Superman, some people will say that Superman represents the Antichrist, but there's still many connotations that align him with the story of Jesus and so forth. And these planets are where the greatest stories, movies, fairy tales, and so forth come from, including religions or religious stories. The sun is also known as the truth, the light, God's appointed son, the good shepherd, the lamb of God, king of kings, alpha and omega. And when we hear the story of Jesus, Jesus traveled with 12 disciples or followers and performed miracles. Now, Jesus is not the only one to have this story, by the way. So if you look at other solar deities out there, you'll see they also have these stories. So if you want to understand the sun a bit better, you can look at other solar deities. But so you know, those 12 disciples that the sun travels with are the solar constellations, the planets, the like the star signs. We hear the story of Jesus buried for three days and resurrected. Jesus is not the only solar deity to have this story. But what we're, what we're talking about here is the solstice, which means soul still. And it's where the or sun still, sorry, soul is sun. And so and uh, solstice, this is still in Latin. And if you have a look at the Christmas celebration, well, December 22nd is when they say that the sun dies for three days. And then on the third day, it rises again. So we get the resurrection. As you can see here, we have Jesus. We then have Krishna. We then have sun, uh, the sun god Ra. And you can see they all have the solar disk. And then we have Superman. And his story is very similar to the story of Jesus. And there's many videos on decoding Superman. I will do decoding videos later on uh, in the future for future videos. But if you look at that and if you look that up, you will see that there's other people out there talking about and decoding the story of Superman and Jesus and so forth, and how the S in his chest represents the serpent, and the serpent represents knowledge and Lucifer and so forth. And hopefully, when we get to the dish, you'll understand how things aren't quite as they seem. So then we have Saturn. Saturn in the sky is Satan. Saturn represents Satan. And Saturn's color is black, he's male. Saturnalia is what we know today as Christmas. So the celebration of Christmas is actually Saturnalia. Saturn also known, is also known as Kronos, Father Time, the system. His male, his day is Saturday, Saturn's day. So we get the word Saturday from. He rules Capricorn and Aquarius, last Titan and cruel father of Zeus. And Taskmaster of Zodiac can bring structure and meaning to our world. And if you look at the story of Kronos and Zeus, you know that Kronos ate, ate his children because he didn't want his children to surpass him. And then Zeus, the son, defeated Kronos. In battle and then went on to become the ruler and we have the story of light and dark constantly playing out in all religions and all stories as well any good story has a good and a bad guy so we have light and dark element so i want to look at this in the in <clears throat> excuse me how we look at hermeticism hermeticism 
tells you that there is no good and bad, but just different degrees of the same. Everything is the same, but they're just different degrees, like light and dark, hot and cold, and so forth. All degrees of the same thing, but just different degrees. Saturn reminds us of our boundaries, responsibilities, our commitments, makes us aware of the need for self-control and of boundaries and our limits, and associate with fathers or father and authority figures. And then rules, discipline, rules, and regulations imposed on us by authority figures. So usually what you find is that Saturn is an authority figure. And if you look at movies, so for example, Darth Vader, the evil genius is usually represented by Saturn, the authority figure, the father figure. The, I can't remember what his name is now, who wrote, uh, who wrote the movie Star Wars. Star, he was an occultist, and there's many occult elements within that movie. Remember, occult simply means what is hidden and Saturn's lessons actually help us to grow so again it's not about looking at this as Satan or evil but his lessons help us to grow now many people hold Saturday as a Sabbath so they hold that day as a holy day the Sabbath and many people even the churches what they're actually worshipping is Saturn Saturn is known to be the first sun actually if you look this up and now take my word for it, look it up yourself as well and see what you find. But the story goes that where we think about Kronos eating his children, the story goes that during the daytime the stars run away from the sun because they want to get eaten by the sun. But at night when the sun goes down, the moon comes out, the mother, the kids come out to play again. And if you look at the story of Kronos and Zeus and his mother and so forth, you'll understand how that makes sense as well and how they came up with that. And here we have Kronos and what we call Satan or the devil. And then we have Jupiter. Jupiter is known as Zeus, also known as Thor or Amun-Ra. He's the god of thunder. And he's, he's said to be the boss and to be ruling in this current time in the age of Pisces of 2,000 years. And I know we're entering the age of Aquarius or have entered the age of Aquarius. The Jews know him as Jehovah. Jehovah we will call God as many religions do and his day is thursday and that's thor's day so thor is also a representation of jupiter and hence why we get thursday from thor's day thor the the uh, pagan god in north in norse mythology his color is blue represents sagittarius rule sagittarius and including also rule success abundance money growth gambling expansion and those kind of things so therefore if you wanted to cast a spell for money or something or luck, you're going to use the blue candle, for example, and do it on a Thursday, and preferably even the hour of Jupiter. Jupiter is the king of king of gods and the ruler of Mount Olympus, god of the sky, lightning, thunder, law, order, and justice. With symbols that represent him include the thunderbolt, the eagle, the oak tree, the scepter, and the scales. And when you look through, when you look at all kinds of sigils and logos of different companies, organizations. Uh, government organizations and so forth you will see these particular symbols there as well so you can see how they carry a lot of meaning to many different entities and powers out there otherwise they wouldn't use them and just also the brother and husband of Hera so the brother and the husband and you hear stories about where many royalty or royals will mix bloodlines and so forth so you can see how we get that connotation from these stories as well uh, Zeus known to have many lovers and had many children is also the brother of Poseidon and Hades if you look at Zeus Poseidon and Hades Zeus ruled the skies Poseidon ruled the seas and Hades ruled the underworld you can see we have a sort of trinity there and there's a trinity that plays out in many different aspects as well so it's not a case of one thing relates to one element or one deity or so forth it can relate to many as well also Ganesh represents Jupiter as well in Hinduism you see so and if you look at the planet Jupiter, it's surrounded by lightning and thunder and so forth. It's like a mass of that, of lightning and thunder. So you can see why Zeus is represented by the lightning. And here we have Zeus, and you can see the pose as well. If you look at the, the, the way Zeus is sitting, and then you look at the, the Baphomet, how the Baphomet sits, it's very similar there. So you wonder where that comes from. And then you have the eagle which you everybody that's been in power for example if you ever look at for example um uh the nazis had the, had the bird the americans have the bird and so forth so you can see it represents power and ruling um and that kind of thing and then we have obviously the egyptian god and then we have the norse god which is thor 
And then we go into Mars, and Mars is the god of war, also known as Aries, Shiva, or Tia. And we have Tia's Day, which is Tuesday, and that's where that comes from. Uh, the color, its color is red, so when you see, like, in the movies, you see the bad guy sometimes being red, or, like, the warrior. Again, that's where representation comes from, and that's why they say if you want to start war, you start it on the Tuesday. 9-11 was, was initiated on the Tuesday as well. And records are released on the Tuesday, or new albums or songs are released on the Tuesday as well. So you can see where that comes from, and Mars is all about action. Mars rules the signs of Aries and Scorpio. If you know anyone that's an Aries, generally you find they have a tendency to be quite aggressive, want to argue their point all the time, and always want to be first. And Aries is the first of the Zodiac. Represents male sexuality, strength, lust, anger, destruction, medical issues, and also action, of course, including war, violence, and bloodshed. And his symbols include the boar, the serpent, the dog, the vulture, the spear, and the shield. Zeus, um, he's the son of Zeus and Hera. Now, Mars, or Ares, was despised by the other gods except for Aphrodite. And everybody puts Ares and Aphrodite together as the two lovers. So they had a Taurus sort of passionate love affair. And then you get the male and female element there as well. And you can see the sign of Mars is also the sign of male sexuality. His Latin name Mars gives us the word Marshall. And you can see here we have the God of War. And then we also have Shiva as well. I've not gone into Neptune. I know Neptune is Poseidon. And his trident is, is he has the trident, his free sprung spear. And you can see the same thing here for Shiva. But remember, again, a lot of these gods represent more than just one particular planet. And they have elements of others and so forth. And then we have Venus. Venus is the female, also known as Frigga, Freya, Lucifer, Aphrodite, the beautiful one. You hear them talk about the story of Lucifer being the most beautiful angel as well. And you hear many people tell you that Lucifer was actually, in fact, um, a female. Lucifer means light bearer or morning star. The sun is a day star. So, by the way, Lucifer is not the devil. So, you can see Satan. Saturn is Satan. Lucifer is Venus. Two different here. So the sun is the day star, Venus is the morning star and the evening star. So Venus challenges the sun for the light of the morning. Hence where you get this conflict. Why is there a conflict between Lucifer and Jesus? You can see where that comes from. So you can start piecing the pieces together here. As we know, Venus is female and her day is Friday or Freya's day or Frigga's day. We can see how Freya's day equals Friday. So you can see where the names come from also. Her colour is green. And she was Taurus and Libra. If you wanted to do a love spell, you do a love spell and you do it to the goddess of love, beauty and desire, which is Venus. You would do it on a Friday, preferably in the hour of Venus. Though the candle you might use might be a red candle because red is about passion as well and lust. And the symbols include the dove, the bird, the apple, the bee, the swan, the myrtle and the rose. Again, you'll see these symbols that people use in other areas of life, even companies as well, when you look at company logos. So you can see where they're going with this. And her name gives us the word aphrodisiac, while her Latin name Venus gives us the word venereal. And venereal is all about uh, passion and sex and, and lust. And here we have Aphrodite, and then also have a representation here of Lucifer. Remember, Lucifer, in the King James Version of the Bible, was only mentioned once. When, we, when they say Lucifer... The morning, the morning star, that's what they're talking about, light of the morning. And then you have Jesus, the sun, the day star. So you can see how they had that conflict in the sky first thing in the morning. And then we have Mercury. Mercury, also known as Hermes, also known as Iris. Now, Hermes is said to be the, the female because he's a hermaphrodite, or some say bisexual, but more so hermaphrodite. And he's the messenger of the gods, the god of commerce, thieves, eloquence, and streets. Also known for speed, and Mercury is the fastest traveling planet out of the seven major planets. The symbols include the Cadasus, I believe it's called, which is a staff entwined with two snakes, the winged sandals and cap, the stork, and the tortoise. And he's the son of Zeus and the nymph Maya, which now can get a bit confusing if you think about Mercury's day is Wednesday, and Wednesday is Odin's day. And Odin is the father of Zeus. So you can see how it can get quite confusing. So it's not to say that this person, this this deity is this deity, is this deity, is this deity. It's a representation of the planets and everyone's told their story. Every particular power or religion has told their story in their way. Same as in movies, etc. But you can start to use this to start to begin to decipher as well. Especially when, to write your own story, a good way to get characters is look at the planets. Because they already have characteristics to give your characters. 
And if you're doing your hyper sigil, again, you need characters. You can see how you can get characters because it's the exact same thing that they've done here as well. Uh, Mercury's color is purple, and it was Virgo and Gemini. Virgo is the Virgin, the Virgin Mary. If you look at the symbol of Virgo as well, it looks like an M with a Y. Well, it is like an M with a little little Y, which is like Mary. If you look at other religions as well, where they use the Virgin, you can see the names are very similar. So you can see how it came to fruition, where it all stemmed from. And it's all about communication, intellect, writing, contracts, information, wisdom, science, memory, electronics, and speed. It's also about talking as well. Um, so, for example, if you wanted, <clears throat> when it says eloquence, if you wanted to be able to influence people more with your speech, you would look to Mercury for that type of quality. And here you can see the representations of Mercury. Um, again, again, the winged sandals, etc. And then we have the moon. So the moon is the goddess, the mother. The moon is also known, or we get the we get the Monday from Moon Day. And her colour is silver, she rules cancer, she's female, and her correspondence is a clairvoyance, sleep, emotions, astral travel, imagination, women birth, and reincarnation. And she's also known as the goddess Selene, stroke Luna, uh, also the goddess uh, Chandra from, from uh, Hindu mythology, Khonsu and more. And if you think about Luna, Luna cycles, lunatic, that's where we get the word lunatic. In, for example, mental institutions, they say people act more crazy around the full moon. In Hinduism, they have a thing called a Kadashi where they, for example, won't eat, they won't drink coffee or eat grains for 24 hours, all to prepare for the moon cycles. And they do this every two weeks. And it's so their emotions are not so affected by the moon. If you think about what the moon influences, it influences a reproductive and menstrual cycle in women, but also controls tides and affects our emotions because we are about 80 percent water and so if you think about that where it controls the water pulls the tides in and out and then if we are 80 percent water and we have our water system or the water in our body being pulled back and forth as well you know you can see how that kind of corresponds to that and why it affects our emotions also during the times of a full moon you hear where they talk about the werewolves you wonder where that story came from and then also we know that during times of a full moon, there's more car accidents, more violent incidents, and so forth. Passions run high during the time of a full moon. And during the time of a new moon is when, for example, we might want to start something new. If you want to start a new habit, you do it in the new moon, etc. And here you can see the different representations of the moon goddesses. And again, you can see just by their heads, you have the moon. Just like the solar deities have the, the sun symbol, the lunar deities have the moon symbol. So that was, I want to do this video, I want to be really quick at this video and put this out there for you and just touch on the seven major planets and how they correspond to these different deities and different religions and so forth, just so you can get a gist of how these stories come about and how they come to be. Of course, the subject is a lot more vast than this. We have to include these other planets in there as well. And then there's also the things like the actual um, solar zodiac signs. So, for example, Scorpio is a sign that looks at you and then stings you from behind its tail. So it's almost like a betrayal. When it stings you, its sting looks like its sting looks like a kiss from a human, and hence why we have Judas Iscariot is a Scorpio sign that betrays Jesus, betrays Jesus, and then it's after the sun travels through Scorpio that it starts its down its decline into the winter time, etc. So you can see it's a lot more in depth than that. I wanted to simplify as much as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. If you've got any questions, by all means, ask them. And then what I'll do is um, I'll be happy to answer your questions on down YouTube, Facebook as well. And also, if you do have any topics that you want to discuss or you want me to discuss in more depth, by all means, please let me know. Until next time, thanks for listening. Peace out and God bless. So here we see Zeus to the left with the eagle and staff etc and then we also see Amun Ra and then we see Thor as well the Norse god Thor and if we look at how Zeus is sitting it's very similar to how the Baphomet sits in his pose I'm not saying it's exactly the same but there's a distinct similarity there so you can see how things filter down for example even where the Christians have the cross yet you see the Egyptians had the cross before the 
the Christians did, and so forth. So pressing on, we have Mars. Mars is the god of war, so known as Aries, Shiva, and Tia, and that's how we have Tia's day or Tuesday, and that's where the word Tuesday comes from. And his colour is red, he rules Aries and Scorpio, and Mars is a male energy, so you can see the symbol on the top right hand side represents the male, and that's the symbol we use now currently to represent male, male energy. And Mars is all about male energy, male sexuality, strength, lust, anger, destruction, medical issues, action. He's also um, associated with war, violence, bloodshed. So for example, 9-11, uh, um, that was instigated on the Tuesday. Also, for example, records are generally released on the Tuesday as well. So if you wanted to, for example, um, incite something along this nature, then you would do that on a Tuesday, again, in relation to Mars. Red also symbolizes passion as well, hence why the color red is used, for example, in love spells. These symbols include the boar, the serpent, the dog, the vulture, the spear, and the shield. Again, we've seen these in many different ruling nations. Uh, the eagle, for example, that we saw that... that um, that Zeus has, and he will see the vulture. And generally, when these birds of prey, a lot of them will say relate to the phoenix as well, which is a bird that rose from its own ashes. But you can see how a lot of things link back together. So my point I want to make with regards to these examples are that you'll see characteristics, symbols, to represent various characteristics, for example. So in Star Wars, it was um, Darth Vader was all, in all black, but then you had the, in the new Star Wars, you had the other character, his name escapes me right now, but he was red and black. So that same type of example. Mars is the son of Zeus and Hera, and all the other gods except Aphrodite despised him. So he's known for having a strong, passionate love affair, or love affairs with Aphrodite. And that's why we have Aphrodite's Venus represents the female, male and female. And if you look at the Hermetic principles, again, Law number seven is the law of gender, which basically states that there's male and female in everything and in all forms of creation is male and female throughout the universe. And here we have the God of War to our left hand side, then we have Shiva to our right hand side. And you can see the symbology here uh, constantly throughout, especially if you look at Shiva. You can see the symbology, you can see the snake, uh, you can see that the half moon crescent. You can see the horn, like the ram's horn, for example, uh, so forth. The trident is more representation of Neptune. Neptune has the trident, which is Poseidon, the god of the sea. But Shiva is known as the Hindu representation of Mars, god of destruction, and so forth. Then we have Venus, the female. So you have the male and the female. Venus is also known as Frigga, Freya, Lucifer, and Aphrodite. So Lucifer and Satan are not the same. And in the King James Version of the Bible, Lucifer is only mentioned once, and he's the morning star. So he's the light bearer of the morning star, and the sun is the day star. Now this can get confusing when people say, but surely Jesus was the morning star, or the, sun, the, uh, the star of the morning. But also Lucifer was the morning star, how does that work? So Venus is the morning star and the evening star, and in the morning Venus is the brightest star there is. And you can vaguely see Venus during the day. Venus competes with the sun for the morning, uh, for the morning uh, to bring the morning light, for example. So hence why we say there's opposition between Lucifer and Jesus. You see how this is very sim uh, symbolic, these stories. And it's, again, it's not to discredit anything that's being taught. I'm not saying that Jesus wasn't a real character or that Krishna wasn't a real character or any of these things. I'm just saying... That a lot of the stories that we're being told, they're based off of the stories of the planets, basically. Venus obviously is the female. Lucifer was said to be female also. And when people describe Lucifer, they always say yeah, Lucifer was the most beautiful angel in heaven. When we think about beauty, generally we think about female as opposed to male. It doesn't mean that there isn't men out there that also have that characteristic, but it's more of a female thing, say a woman is beautiful. Venus's day is Friday, or Freya's day, hence we get Friday, Freya's day, and her colour is green. 
Now, I know that we pray to Venus when we do a love ritual and we do it on a Friday, on the day of Venus, but generally red candles used, as I said earlier, and that's because it's all about passion as well. And love carries a lot of passion. Venus rules Taurus and Libra. She's the goddess of love, beauty, and desire. And her symbols include the dove, the apple, the bee, the swan, the myrtle, and the rose. And what's interesting, if you do take these symbols and just Google them and look into the symbology behind these symbols, they generally have a much deeper meaning as well. And her name gave us the word aphrodisiac, while her Latin name, Venus, gives us the word venereal. Venereal means it's all about passion and lust, etc. And here we can see Aphrodite and then Obviously, this is a representation of Lucifer. And then we have Mercury. So Mercury is also known as Hermes, um, also known as Iris, more commonly known as Hermes. And Mercury is considered the female or a hermaphrodite or stroke bisexual by some people, but more hermaphrodite. And Mercury is the messenger of the gods, the gods of commerce, thieves, eloquence and streets and speech so when we think about eloquence eloquent speech that's where mercury is attributed to and of course speed as well mercury being the fastest planet within the constellation and symbols include that mercury that represent mercury is, is the cadasis i hope i said that correctly which is the staff entwined with two snakes and we see that in medical as well establishments the wing sandals and the cap the stalk and the tortoise Mercury is the son of Zeus and the nymph of Maya. This can get confusing because Mercury's day is Wednesday. Wednesday comes from Odin's day and Odin is the father of Zeus. But again, like I said, if you look at different mythologies out there and different stories and perhaps historical stories, if you look at my video on the words of power and how I talk about how words are used, you look at the etymology of words. So for example, you have like history, is two words put together as plain words. His story. Whoever wins the battle gets to tell his story. So things may not be an exact representation. They're like a symbology of. The symbolism of what it determines. His or her colour is purple. Mercury rules Virgo and Gemini. And it's all about communication, intellect, writing, contracts, information, wisdom, science, memory, electronics and speed. So Mercury is a is the one planet that commonly goes into retrograde. Now, they all do, but Mercury, more commonly than the rest, will be in retrograde at certain points in the year. And that's why they say, for example, you shouldn't sign contracts during a Mercury retrograde. Or electronical, electronic equipment is more likely to break down or not work correctly during a Mercury retrograde and so forth. So you see, the planets have a mass amount of influence. And what's interesting about astrology is things like Christianity and other religions have called it like the devil's tool, so to speak. Yet they use it themselves. If you look at the symbology of all these religions, you'll see that there's massive connotations toward the planets. And again, as you see, the story's being played out. It's all about the planets. And also things like local newspapers and magazines where they've printed little, um, little astrology predictions, so to speak. And they sort of discredit astrology as well. But if you look into your birth chart when it comes to astrology, see where the planets are placed within astrology, you will see that actually these things have a deeper meaning and connotation to your life and tell a much different story. Though always remember that you still have your will. Regardless of what the planets line up, you still have your will. And here we have a representation you can see of Hermes or Mercury as well. And then we have the moon. So the moon is also known as Moon's Day is Monday, Moon Day, also known as Monday, hence we get the word Monday from the moon. And her colour is silver, she's female, rules cancer, and she corresponds to clairvoyance, sleep, emotions, astral travel, imagination, women, birth and reincarnation. And she's also known as the goddess Selene stroke Luna, also known as Chandra in or Chandra in Hinduism and Konsu and more. And Luna influences the the moon or the lunar represents ref, influences the reproductive and menstrual cycle in women and in Hinduism by the way uh, I'm not sure if you if you've never looked into this you might want to take a look into this um, our body is mainly water and that's what the moon controls the tides and it affects our emotions 
Now, we're mainly made up of water, something like 80% water. So it makes sense the moon would affect our emotions as well. And in Hinduism, what they do is they they do what's known as observing a kadashi. This is where they won't eat certain foods like grains and coffee beans, etc. So they're not as affected by the emotions of the moon. And generally, arguments are more likely to happen around that time. For example, if there's any emotional outbursts that happen, they happen more or less during that time, or more likely during that time. There's more car accidents that have been recorded during that time. In mental institutions, there's more incidents and there's more what they call crazy behavior during that time also. And here you can see the representations of the different moon goddesses here. And you see how they had the, they have um, the, the half moon or the moon crescent on the head, just like these are lunar deities, just like the solar deities have the actual sun on their head as well as representation. So that's just covering some basics on the seven major planets and what they represent. And what's a, what's one way I like to look at this? One way I like to view the planets themselves and the universe is to say, imagine this God force It's the macro and we're a micro of the macro. So it's like we're a small part of God. And when these planets are at different points within our solar system, the macro can have certain emotions, certain feelings, and we feel what the macro feels. That's why when the planets are in certain alignments, we feel differently. Now, of course, based upon when you was born, the planets would be in a specific alignment at that time. So based upon your time of birth, your day of birth, your year of birth, month of birth, and of course, your place of birth. And that's why I would advise that everybody looks into their own astrological chart see a bit more and someone like alwaysastrology.com you can get your free birth chart and start looking a bit more into it it'll tell you a bit more about yourself and your life purpose and the kind of things that drive you what influences you and so forth so i hope this has helped i hope it's been informative for you and the other thing that you can also do if you wanted to write a story or put something together a good way to do that is perhaps take the planets out there and use their characteristics to build your characters off. So for example, when you make, when you create a hyper sigil, that kind of thing also. And of course, it's been very brief. There's more to this than simply what I've told you now. And I'll do another video on the other aspects. So for example, you know, we have Virgo. Virgo represents Virgin. If you look at the sign of Virgo, it looks like an M with a little Y. And that's what, hence we get the name Mary. Mary is the Virgin. And that's why the sun is born from a virgin because of how it follows Virgo around the constellation. Then you have, for example, Scorpio. Scorpio looks you in your eye but stings you from behind with its tail. It's almost like a betrayal. And the Scorpio sting looks like a kiss. So hence why we we have Judas Iscariot who kissed Jesus when he betrayed him. After he kissed Jesus, Jesus went that's when he went his path went downhill, so to speak, to his death. And that's why the sun also, after it goes through Scorpio, it starts to descend and we go into winter times and so forth. But look, I'm going to leave you that for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or any comments, please put them down below or on Facebook. And I'll be back with another video. Till next time, please like, subscribe, share. Thanks for listening and peace out and God bless.